So I'll jump in here with my wonderful Excel tip. Um, as you remember last week, we used the scrolly thingy, which I called it. That's its technical name. Now we use the scroll bar to create a scrollable list, which is very similar to this one um, found in my book. And I, I promised you that we would... Here, I'll just make this quick. See, look how, how much fun this is. You can have fun just scrolling and scrolling. You don't even have to look at the data. You just get mesmerized by it. So I actually... Um, we talked about how to make this in my book, and last week we made the scrolling mechanism. Um, and this week we're going to talk about, I have this sort by, and then I have this data validation dropdown. So I have a total here. If I want to sort by the health level metric, I can select that here, and it's going to automatically do this. And when I say automatically, I mean no VBA automatically. So I guess that's not automation technically, but as you can see, it's very quick. Um, and it's very responsive, and the reason is because it's all formula driven. So this week... We're going to talk about how to build something like that. And maybe um, next time we're here, I always like to decide this on the fly, um, we'll talk about uh, how to do the sort of visual elements of it because as you can see from my example worksheet, um, which I'll pull up here, it's not as fun looking. Uh, but that's how it is. So just a, a quick review. We created this table. Hopefully everyone remembers. And then we have these, uh, we use as a, used a weighted average model. So the weighted average model is the multiplication of these um, scores by these weights. The weights add up to 100. So um, it, uh, we developed, I showed you the result. I showed you how to plug it into the table. And we bypassed the sort column, which we'll talk about this time, as you'll see in a few minutes. And then over here, this is the scroll table we made. And the, the fundamental problem, so to speak, is that none of this is in order. So project one is on top. I guess this is sort of in order, but let's assume because, you know, that's fake data. It says there's project one, two, three. Let's assume that this would be random data and you don't know what those project names are. And you probably want to know either the best um, or the worst results. So this table cannot do that for you. So what we'll need to do is create uh, some mechanism for sorting. And the result is actually going to be similar to the mechanism that we used here and that, uh, if you recall, this pulls from this index. But we're going to have to sort of get a new index to pull from. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So let's start, let's start uh, talking about how um, you can even create a sorted list in Excel uh, without, um, without uh, doing a cell sort or without using VBA. So this sorting example is actually very similar to the one previously. And this is going to be quick review, but I don't want to leave you in the lurch. And, talk about something that you don't remember. So remember this uh, scroll bar right here is linked to cell A3. So when I scroll down, it moves up and down. And then these numbers below it, we just said equals. And we added a 1 to it. And then we dragged down to 15. Ooh, dragged down too much there. OK, so as you can see, it all scrolls together exactly how we want. And so we can actually use either the function large or small to create a sorted list. So, you know, the, the one way to think about it, and this is fairly easy, large is going to create a descending list that is from, or I should say, yes, descending list that's going to be greatest to least, and small is going to use a ascending list from, from smallest to least. So let's talk about how to do that. And here we're, we're dealing with the result. So I'm going to say equals large, and I'm going to jump back to our table here. So remember, this is our result column. Here I just showed that it's a function of ABC. Perhaps I should have called it result, but you know, these names change. So here I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reference the entire column in our, our array, and then I'm going to jump back to our sorting example here, and I'm going to say, so remember that this is equal to 1. So this is going to pull out the first highest value. So that's 85.3, and if I drag this down, it's going to reference 2 now, so that's going to pull out the second highest value. So remember this um, argument here always pulls out the nth largest value. And if I wanted to do ascending, I could change large to small. In fact, if I wanted to do some sort of uh, switching mechanism, I could probably use an if, or there's various ways to do this, but I could say do a large or do a small, depending on whether they've selected ascending or descending in a drop-down box. So let's, talk, let's show how this works. As you can see, these numbers are descending as I scroll down. So now that we know what the largest number is in the result, we don't really know what program or what variables belong to that because ostensibly, you know, we don't just want the largest value. We want the program information or the project information 
that goes along with that. So what we need to do is we actually need to match. We need to do a reverse on that. So we we need to match that value back into the um, back into the result, and that's going to give us the location. So I'm going to say here's our lookup value. Let's jump back to our data. I'll just show you that I've selected everything, and then we're, we want to do an exact match, always an exact match for this. So that tells us that the match index is at number, is that location or row 51. So I'll uh, double click that, and that's going to go all the way down. And so similar to this, which was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, we, we know this intuitively as being in, uh, in an order. This isn't in order, but it's the same concept because we're just going to use an index to pull the program uh, name information. So here I've done that, and I'm just going to repeat my steps because I always like doing that, just so you can see. So I say index, we'll jump back to the project name here, so that's going to be the array we provide, and then we're going to insert, I'll click the wrong tab, we're going to insert the match index in there. So, you know, what I'm going to do here is since I'm going to drag this right in a second, I'm going to lock in that C. So we'll double click this and then we'll drag down and as you can see now it's it's pulling out the project information in order and if I drag that right you can see it's going to do the same um, for the result. So now if we're using match there's one obvious problem that we're going to have and that is what happens if the data repeats itself because in that case it's always going to find the first match. So if I scroll down. I, yeah you had me thinking about tiebreakers. Right, so I, I may use a different method than you, Oz, but you can see right here it's actually happening. Um, and so that is what we need to overcome, and we're going to do it right now. Okay, so let's jump over to this tab I've called with sorting, um, and I'm going to throw one little extra quirk in here to make this fun, and that is before I was sorting on the result, but now I want to sort on any column of my choosing. So above here I have that drop-down, result A, B, or C. So... Let's choose A, and what this is going to do is just simply match A, B, or C within this uh, range. So that's going to give us 1, 2, 3, or 4. You can see this if I switch to B, it goes to 2, C goes to 3, result, it goes to 4. Um, so that is going to become important in one second, because what we're going to do is we're going to recreate the functionality that we used over here specifically for... Um, the result, and we're going to put it across the entire table. But instead of putting it out here on our spreadsheet, we're going to actually make it, or I should say on our, our table uh, spreadsheet, we're going to actually make it part of the Excel table. So over here I have something called sort column. And you see that there's kind of a funky formula in here. And we're going to delete this right half for a second. But hold on to that. Hold on and remember it's there because that's going to help us with the type tiebreaker. And we're going to recreate this formula here. So we know that this is 1, 2, 3, or 4, so that matches our match column. So I'll just delete this here. So we know that whatever we want to be, we have whatever we want to sort, um, sorry about that, whatever we want to sort is going to be a function of that selected column. So here I'm going to say index, and I'm going to select uh, these values here, and then I'm going to supply it that um, number that we have, so our column ID. And I'll hit enter, and that's saying that we're interested. So if it's a 1, let me just show you this real quickly. Um, so I'm going to just drag this over here to make it quick. So here we have column ID 4. That says we're interested in result. Um, so you can see here it's pulling 59.75 here, 46, because we're interested in the result. And likewise, if I change this to... Um, a, B, or C, so I'm going to change it so it becomes a 2. This is actually going to pull up that second column. You see that there's that it's pulling from B. So 60, 60, 31, 31, 73, 73. Okay, so now that we have the column we're interested in, all we need to do is uh, create, recreate that, um, we recreate that large functionality that we did previously. But in this case, we're going to use that sort column instead of using a specific column in here because this allows us some dynamic referencing. So I'll just do that, hit that comma, we'll go back here, select the index. So you've seen this all before, so you're probably wondering, Jordan, okay, what the heck? You know, you have repeating values. So how do we get around the repeating values? Well, inherent within this table structure is this IDs column. So what I'm going to do is actually make this data a little noisy. 
And by noise, I mean I'm going to introduce some randomness. So here, I want to make every value in this sort column unique. So I'm going to use the ID over here. So this is 1, 2, 3, and those, there's never going to be a repeating ID. And I'm just going to divide that by, let's say, 100,000. Yeah, let's make it 10,000. So that's going to make these numbers slightly off. Um, I think there's another name for a jittering when you, when you graph. So we've introduced some randomness in this, and that has, made, that has made it such that none of these values will ever repeat. So if we go back to our with sorting, you can see here that these values are now different. So what we can do here is that, remember, we're only just trying to match the location of these values within this column. So we're going to do a zero here. Remember, all we, we're always going to be doing uh, exact matches. So you may be wondering, well, but now we've changed the value of these data of this data. Well, remember, we're only we're only matching it back into that column. We still um, will pull the data back from the tables we're interested in. So let's say, so let's just recreate this because we have a oops, let me hit cancel there because we have A, B, C, D, and result here. So I'm going to say index, and I'll go back here. And instead of using the sort column. We're actually just going to use the regular column that it will refer to. So let's jump back here. We'll select, oops, sorry, we want to select the match index. And let's make sure I get that right. We want to lock that C. I'll drag this across here. And I'll drag this down. And as you can see, this no, these numbers are slightly different. So right now we're sorting on column B. So you can see this is 100.0053, but this is actually pulling back 199. So this we see 96, 96. Now, I haven't dealt with the tiebreakers. I just say that that's 5 and 6. But you can see that we've actually gone around the issue by making each number slightly different. Um, and that's how we can pull, pull that information back. And then if I go up here, I see column to sort on. I can select the result. Updates automatically. I can select... A, you can see it's sorting there, B, sorting there, C, sorting there, and of course we can drag down. Now this is, this is very simple right now, so we'll want to add some visual elements to that, and we can do that in the next exciting chapter, which is next week, or not next week, next episode. All right. So just chill to the <laughs> next episode. <laughs> so how is that? That's what yeah. in mind? Is that one sriracha? You can, you can oh, oh, man, I, I'm just so excited. Man. This guy. <laughs> yeah. Got my mind on my money. I have my money on my mind. That is right. Um, also know, relevant. You know something? What's up? I'm, I'm, I'm going five because here's the thing is not everybody would do that. But you know, do the scrolling thing. But a lot of people do want sorted lists, right? Um, that will automatically be sorted the way that they want them. And I like your thought process that you took us through to get there. So yeah, this this is a really good tip on uh, many different layers. So yeah, bye. Thanks.